Welcome to another video session with the EQ Lighting Application Suite and here especially the programmer. Today I will show you how to integrate and how to connect external devices and interfaces to the programmer. But first let's have a look at the structure of such an installation. So you need a server system to run the program of the Lighting Application Suite. Connected are a monitor and a keyboard and of course a mouse. And here on the server we have the programmer running. What you need additionally are output devices to create your DMX interconnections. Usually Butler S2 or Butler XT2 and they are connected to the server of an Ethernet switch. Do not use a cross cable user switch to connect the butlers to the server. And these engines, they create the real DMX ring going to your fixtures. You can have, of course, additional elements like glass touch terminals to control your shows. All the actions on the glass touch terminals are now routed over the butler to the programmer and to your show. Another possibility to control the show is using a MIDI console connected to the server or using the dry contacts or using an RS-232 connection. And the most sophisticated way to control your show is using the action pad, for example on the monitor of your connected terminal or running over wireless line on an iPad, iPhone or an Android device. After you created your show, there it is possible to download the show to the server connected engines, for example Butler XT2, and then run the whole show in a so-called standalone mode on the Butlers using glass touch terminals, dry contacts on the Butler XT2, or over wireless LAN or directly connected the action pad, which is also able to run in standalone mode with a Butler XT2. The first step now would be to set up the programmer correctly regarding the Ethernet interface that we are using for the connection to the engines. And this is done via the application options in the advanced tab. Here we have all possible Ethernet interfaces and I use the local area network connection on the baseboard as the connection to the engines. Do not use the extension 1 for the server because 1 is reserved for engines coming from the factories. They have a default Ethernet address of 192.168.123.1 and using 1 as a server address would result in an address conflict on the Ethernet. So in this case I use 10 which is a safe address for the server. Using this address as the server address, the programmer discovers in the upper left window in the network tab two butlers connected to the network. If I click on one of these entries, I will get a dialog. And in this dialog, I can configure the butlers as I need it for the network. Here we already have an assigned address the Butler XT2 has an IP address of 220 and if we do the same for the S2 you can also see okay this is an address that does not conflict with any other component in the network. We have all additional parameters here so this dialog coming from this dialog in the upper left from the network top enables you to set up your engines or external devices as long as they are not connected to the programmer. So my engines are complete and they are configured and that's all fine. Now to use my butlers as DMX output devices I have to add them to the programmer and this is done via the device manager. And the device manager is not only the tool to add butlers or any other interface devices over the device manager, you will add every system connection for the programmer. To add my butlers, it's quite simple. I don't have to input the 
connection and configuration data manually, but I use the little hat symbol to start the automatic device setup wizard. And the setup wizard now will find my two butlers in the network. And it can not only connect butlers, it can also connect eBus devices that are connected, for example, to the Butler XT and Butler XT2. Now clicking OK, my eNet devices will be added to the system and it will also find eBus elements in the network which can be added then. Now I have all my elements, the butlers and the eBus interfaces connected to the program. Double clicking on an entry will open an additional device properties window and here I can assign a name for the device, I see the IP address, I can assign the DMX universe that is used with this interface and also RDM and other parameters. For the eBus elements, here the glass touch terminal, double clicking will open another dialog with the configuration data and, most important, the so-called settings. And in the settings, I can, for the device, add the functions and features that will be used for buttons or for masters or for on-off buttons like this one. Clicking here on the button number one enables the assignment of an action that will be executed when this button is pressed on the terminal. I can freeze, I can start a queue list, I can call a macro, or I can play media. I can even send MIDI control messages. For example, I can assign, if this button is pressed, use the queue list number one and, for example, play this queue list. So of this dialog, I can configure my external devices. Make this window a little bit larger. I can also see the current status of the devices. If I go to the Butler S2, you see this Butler covers Universe 3 and 4. This one covers 1 and 2. You can see the firmware version, the hardware. And you can even see the state of the dry contacts of the Butler XT2. I will close this dialog because I have now all these devices available in the program. But the device manager can do even more. It is not only used to assign butlers to the programmer, but every other interface that is used with the programmer. Here I can add any other device. For example, I can add a MIDI device. This, for example, is a generic MIDI interface, a MIDI interface on my server that is used to receive or send MIDI signals. And these MIDI signals can either execute actions in the programmer or you can receive settings, for example, for masters to control intensity or effect speeds or anything else. Or I can add DMX input devices. And I can even assign devices that are not really existent, connected to the programmer. So I can add, for example, an Excite Plus plug interface to use for DMX input. As this device is not really present, it will not really connect to the programmer.
So I have now all necessary devices for the programmer connected and configured and I can start programming my show.